And this is just a quick uh, YouTube to explain how we're going to use a spreadsheet and to complete this experiment. So first thing you want to do is download the spreadsheet by clicking on um, either the GM for Gargamola tube or the scint scintillator sheet, depending on which um, one of these two different types of uh, apparatus you're going to be using. And the other thing that you then want to do is click on one of these to identify which trial that you're going to be uh, working through. So I'm going to click on trial one. I'm going to open it up in a new tab. And I'm going to have Frostbite that YouTube. Presents. Just pause that for a moment. Open. And I'm also going to have my data sheet open. So here's the data sheet here. Now, I'll just have a very quick rundown on what's in the data sheet. So we're going to be taking readings every 15 seconds. So I've already set up that through here. But what I'm going to ask you to do is when you actually start using the YouTube, you'll find that it's uh, almost impossible to get it exactly at 15. So I will ask you to annotate this time to represent the time that you actually are making your measurement. Um, we then place the reading from the tube that we're looking at. For, so for this one, it's the Gagamula tube. And then this particular cell here is going to take into account our background radiation reading. So at the start of the YouTube, they'll tell us what the background radiation is. We type it into here. And that typing, that background radiation represents number of counts in a minute. Now, because we are doing our experiment for 15 seconds, which is one quarter of a minute, you'll see here that we are taking the value and we're dividing it by four. So if I click on this cell here, you'll see it highlights the two cells that it's working with. So here's our cell that we're going to place our um, reading in, and then it's going to subtract the information that goes in this cell divided by four so that we've actually got an equivalent for one quarter of a minute um, representation of the background radiation. Right, so that's pretty much what's going on there. And then in the next cells, we've got the calculation for the activity. Now remember, activity represents how many scintillations we are seeing or how many readings or bips we are seeing per second or per minute. Um, per second is what we're after. So that tells us how active our sample is. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this value here that we've got and then we're going to be dividing it by the time it took. Now that works very well for the very first one because there's, it starts at zero. But what you'll realise is that for the next one, if we just take this value and divide it by 30, then we're really not getting a full idea of what's going on. We're actually finding it out for just this segment here. So what our rule actually does, and then if I click on this, you'll see which cells it's working. It's going to subtract those two values. So we're going to find out the time from one interval to the next interval. And then it's also going to subtract these two values, which is going to give us the number on the Gaga Muller tube between those two. Because the Gaga Muller tube is just going to keep on increasing. We've then got our value there at the midpoint. And we'll talk a little bit later about why we use the midpoint. And then we're going to see how we plot this. So there's a, a very quick explanation of how this particular um, spreadsheet is set up. Now, if we go back to our experiment here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this down across here like this so that I can see both the experiment. I'm going to pull this over a little bit more. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on this side. But before I do, I need to find out what my um, half-life is going to be. Do we have to Just listen science. to them telling us about stuff? Hi, I'm Joanna. And I'm Steve. This is data run number one in our experiment to measure the half-life of metastable barium-137. If you want to know more about the equipment and materials we're using, please see the first video in this series. Now I'm going to Joanna just... Joanna and I have already... Fast forward a tad to background the picture background radiation. Count. All right, so that sounds like the same Using the scintillator with the photomultiplier tube, the average back... All right, so we go back a little bit further. Room. If you're using the Geiger-Muller tube, Here we go. the average background rate is 46.1 counts per minute. Okay, so we're going to put 41.6 in there. 
And you can see already that we've got an initial calculation because there isn't any data in here. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, wait for them to start the experiment. Again, I'm going to fast forward it a bit because I'm not interested in any of the other stuff they're talking about. And here we are ready to start. Start. Now, for the first couple, you may like to sit here and actually watch it go through to 15 seconds, but after a while, all you have to do is fast forward it. And we want to stop it close to 15 as possible. And you might find the last couple, now that was perfect. I did certainly did not expect it to, to stop at exactly 15, just like that. So my first one is actually 15. So when I type that in and write 15, 0 .00, it's still going to just sit as 15 there. All right, and this is the reading I'm going to take, 230. So I'm going to type 230 in here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this window down just a little bit more so that I don't have to actually click backwards and forwards and I can actually just work from one sheet to the other. All right, so when we're good to go, I can start, start this up again, and now I'm going to stop it again at 30, as close to 30 as possible. So as I said, for the first couple, you may want to just sit here and watch it go past, but after a while, you can actually use the slider to, to fast forward. So we're coming up to 30 now. Let's see how close I can get it this time. Okay. Okay, so what I really want to make sure that you guys do is for the reading you're taking, you need to make sure you include those last two decimal places. So I'm going to click on here and I'm actually going to include the 0 0.08 and then my reading for the Gargamel tube is 440. And you're just going to continue on with that, filling it in as you go. And as you can see, the activity is being recalculated for you each time. Remember, it's subtracting, so it'll be subtracting those two over the subtraction between those two to give us the calculation here. Fabulous. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about right now, and then we'll talk a little bit later about the analysis in the second video that I make. Thank you for watching.